Hi everyone, it's Karen from the Historical Society of Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. As you can probably tell, I am in Historic Montgomery Cemetery today. Uh, the cemetery uh, is owned and preserved by the Historical Society. And today we're going to talk about a unknown person who is buried somewhere on the property. On April 9th, 1894, uh, Jacob Richard, who was the operator of the Swedland Locks along the Schuylkill Canal, uh, went to go open the locks. And uh, much to his surprise, he met a lot of resistance when opening it. He thought maybe it was just some debris from the winter season. But unfortunately, to his surprise, a deceased person's body uh, came out from the lock. The lock had not previously been opened since the fall of 1893, so several months had passed at that point, and the body unfortunately was very much decomposed at that time, so it was very hard to have identifying markers. Mr. Richards called the Bridgeport police. Uh, to come and get the body so that it would then be taken to undertaker Charles Comfort. Uh, he then moved the remains to the morgue where Dr. J.R. Olmsted performed the postmortem the following day to see uh, what happened to this individual. Because so much time had passed since this person died, uh, the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth had all been eaten away by insects, and the hair had fallen out, so there really wasn't much left to identify the person aside from what they were wearing. Uh, at first, they thought maybe the person had been hit by a train because there were wounds to the legs. However, during the postmortem, they determined that most likely it was just a result of insects uh, and the decaying body after the person had died. A woman by the name of Mrs. Kate Kurtz of Philadelphia uh, read about the news in the local newspaper and she reached out to the coroner saying that her husband had been missing since December and she asked permission to view the body to see if it was him. Mrs. Kurtz traveled to to Undertaker Comfort's morgue, and after seeing the clothing and the leg wound, she believed it was in fact her husband who had died and was found in the locks. Uh, Kate Kurtz identified the body as her husband Fritz Kurtz, uh, age 32, uh, and a known bricklayer uh, in the area, and to her account, he had been missing since December 1st of 1893, which they believed kind of was around the time this person may have fallen into the locks and died. On April 13th, 1894, the local newspaper, The Register, uh, mentioned that initially the funeral was going to be held in Philadelphia, where Mrs. Kurtz lived. Uh, however, given the state of the body, they determined it would not be easy to move, so they decided to uh, buy a plot here at Historic Montgomery Cemetery and have uh, Mr. Kurtz buried here. On April 14th, 1894, uh, the Norris Town Daily Register's uh, headline was very surprising to everyone. It read, Mrs. Kurtz, not a widow, her husband turns up and stops his funeral. Canal mystery unsolved. So, um, this is where this case gets very interesting. So, uh, Mr. Kurtz's life had been insured for about $800, and Mrs. Kurtz used pretty much all of that money to try to find her husband when he went missing in December. And then when she believed she had discovered uh, his body in the canal, uh, she then used it to make funeral arrangements 
to have him buried here at Historic Montgomery Cemetery. However, just as the funeral services were about to start, a telegraph came in saying that Mr. Kurz had just arrived at the family home in Philadelphia. To everybody's shock, uh, nobody expected this to happen because they thought he had died. So the service was promptly stopped and everybody went to the family house in Philadelphia to see if this telegraph was actually true. When everybody arrived at the family home in Philadelphia, it was true. Mr. Kurtz was there and he had said that he had been in New York City working. And uh, the newspaper describes him as kind of a, quote, roaming chap who didn't really seem bothered to let his wife know that he was heading to New York City to find work. Uh, she had received no communication, had no idea he was heading there. The last time she saw him was in December. And here we are in April, the following year. She hadn't heard anything from him, didn't even know if he was alive. So when she heard a body had turned up, she thought, well, the clothing kind of matches what he would wear. Uh, so everybody thought it was him. And the newspaper goes on to describe that uh, it almost seemed like Mr. Kurtz didn't really seem to think there was any kind of fuss that should have been made. Uh, so it was a very interesting tale. When Undertaker Comfort uh, approached Mr. Kurtz to say that he was in the hole quite a bit for uh, taking on uh, this burial service, Mr. Kurtz is quoted to have said, well, I've only got 15 cents. We can chase the duck and divide that. Uh, so they went on to uh, bury the body since it had decomposed so much at this point. Uh, but to this day, that mystery has still not been solved. Nobody knows who this poor person was. Uh, and according to the newspapers and the very few records we have at the Historical Society that connect to the cemetery, we don't even know where this person was buried. Uh, being an unidentified person in a non-sectarian cemetery, uh, most of the staff and volunteers believe that people such as this person were buried in unmarked graves uh, somewhere either along the sides of the cemetery or maybe towards the back. Uh, but as of October 2024, we are uncertain where people like this person may have been buried. Hopefully one day we will be able to solve this mystery.